Hello there, kindergarten. It's Mrs. Herleman back again. Going to teach you some more about insects. This week we're going to learn about social insects. And we're going to learn what insects belong to this group. What insects are considered social? And if you look at the cover, it might give you a hint as to what insects are social. I see a bumblebee and I see an ant. So that might be a clue of what two insects belong to the social insect group. I chose this book because it teaches us lots of facts about social insects, but I also liked it because look what the author used. Remember, we saw these a lot this year in books that we've read. If it has the arrow pointing to the character, what do we call that? Yeah, a speech bubble. So a lot of the insects in this book are going to teach us facts through speech bubbles. And then these clouds with the little bubbles are think clouds, okay? So these will also teach us facts, but it'll be teaching us what the insect's thinking in their head. So think clouds and speech bubbles, we're gonna find those. The author is Sarah Murphy, designed by Rashad Malik Davis. Social insects. These are bugs. Lots of bugs live alone. But some bugs live in groups. They are called social insects. So there's your first fact. Social insects live in groups. And let's read this think cloud and speech bubble. The ant is thinking, or actually we probably should do the speech bubble first, here is food for the babies. And he's thinking in his head, good, I'll take it to them. Honeybees are social insects. They live together in a hive. And he's telling us, this is my home. And look at that cool picture of a hive. That's the home to honeybees, and lots of them live in there. The hive is made to take care of their babies. All the babies come from one bee, the queen bee. All the bees in the hive are her babies. So look at that. There's the queen and they put a little crown on her to show you that she's the queen. I don't think that she really wears a crown. That might be a make-believe part of the book, but it's just to show you that the bee that has the babies is called the queen. And look at, she's got a th uh, thought bubble. It says, these are my babies. I can have 1,000 babies in one day. Oh my goodness, that is a big number. A lot of babies, 1,000. Bees go through four stages as they grow up. So kind of the same as the butterfly that we learned about last week. So let's see what the four stages are. Starts out as eggs. The queen lays all the eggs. But out of the eggs comes what is called larva. And you can see here in the hive, they kind of look like little worms. And then the larva spin or a pupa, kind of like a caterpillar, kind of like a cocoon around the larva. And then out of the pupa comes the adult. It says the new bees can be queens, drones, or worker bees. So there's three types of bees. And it says here in this speech bubble, how long we stay in the cell decides what kind of bee we will be. 
I thought this was really interesting. So if they stay inside, so each of these is called a cell inside the hive, and that's where the queen lays the eggs. And then they do all their changes inside the cell. And if they stay inside the cell for 16 days, they turn into a queen. And if they stay inside the cell for 21 days, which is a bigger number, they turn into what is called a drone. And we're going to find out what a drone does in a minute here. And then if they stay in the cell even longer for 24 days, they turn into what is called a worker bee. Interesting. So let's see what a drone and a worker are. The drones are male bees. And if we think back, we've talked about male and female before. Males are boys and females are girls. So the drones are male bees who help the queen make babies and then they die. So that's their job is to help the queen make babies. And the drone up here is telling us in his speech bubble, I am a drone. I don't have a stinger. Another interesting fact that not all bees have stingers. So a drone doesn't have a stinger. He doesn't need one because he doesn't leave the hive. He just helps the queen make the eggs and then he dies. But the worker bees are female and they have lots of jobs. They take care of the queen and the new baby bees and here they are taking care of the babies in the cells. So those are worker bees. They are also scout bees who go out to find food. Their food is in flowers. And so up here in these speech bubbles it says, we say where the flowers are with a dance. There are flowers over here. So it's kind of like their way of talking to each other. And over here, it shows you the dance that they do. And this is actually a true fact. Bees do the waggle dance. So it says, tells you here, one worker bee will do a dance. This dance tells bees if flowers are close or far away. First, it waggles in a line. So it kind of does a little zigzag line straight up. Then it turns to the right and makes a half a circle back to where it started. And then it goes back up and repeats the dance, but this time it turns to the left. And that's their way of telling the other bees if the flowers are close or far away. So that's their way of communicating. They go back to the hive and tell the other worker bees where the flowers are. Really cool. The worker bees bring pollen and nectar from the flowers back to the hive. And what do you think they make? Yeah, they labeled the picture here to show you. What do they make? Honey, they turn the pollen and the nectar into honey to eat. And they feed the honey to the babies. So you can see here, they're putting it in all of the cells. And then we take that and turn it into honey that we eat. So bees actually are helpers to us. Now it's gonna talk about ants. Ants are social insects too. Ants live together in a colony. So their group is called a colony. And you can see here, they live under the ground. It says, like beehives, ant colonies have queens, drones, and workers to raise their babies. So very similar, ants and bees have different ants in their group that have different jobs. So this one says, I am a drone. Here's the queen, I am the queen. And then they put little hard hats on the 
these ants to show you that I am a worker. Like the queen bee, the queen ant lays all the eggs and all the ants in the colony are her babies. So the same thing. And there's a great picture of what the eggs look like. Ants also go through four stages as they grow up. So here it shows you, they lay the eggs and then out of the egg comes the larva, which is very much the same as the bee, looks like little worms. And then the larva spin like a pupa, which is the third stage, like a cocoon around the larva. And then out of the pupa comes the adult. When a queen ant first starts a new colony, she lays her eggs. The first eggs to hatch are all workers because the queen ant needs lots of workers to dig tunnels and collect food. When the colony is ready, she feeds some larva a lot of extra food and this helps them to grow wings. So this I thought was really interesting. So all the eggs that are born first, all those are the workers because they have to dig all the tunnels and go and collect food and bring it back to the nest. And then once they have the whole colony set up the way she wants it, then she feeds a whole bunch of the larva extra food to grow wings. And those winged ants become drones. And if they are male or boys, they <clears throat> become one kind of drone. And if they are female, they become a princess. Can you believe that? Ants have princesses and a queen and she has a little crown on her head. So the winged ants become drones if they are male or princesses if they are female. The drones help the princesses have babies and then they die, just like the bees. So the drones help them have the babies and then they die, that's their job. Each princess is now a queen. Each one cuts off her wings and feeds the wings to her babies to help them grow. So interesting. Bees and ants are social insects. They need to live in groups and work together to raise their babies. And I really liked this page at the end because it draws a Venn diagram, and I think well, you've probably seen one of these throughout the year, where you compare what you've talked about. So in our book, we learned about two types of social insects, ants and bees. So a Venn diagram helps you compare them and see how they are the same and how they are different. So this circle, the brown circle, is for the ants. The yellow circle is for the bees, and then the part in the middle where they're connected is how they're both the same. So only ants live in colonies. Only ants collect food, and only ants have a princess. Only bees live in a hive. Only bees dance to tell their other bees where to find food and only bees make honey. But then they both are insects. They both have a queen. They both have a drone. They both have larva. They both have pupa. They both have workers. And they both come from eggs. So lots of cool facts today that we learned about social insects. So, what we like to do after we read nonfiction books is to use a graphic organizer 
to kind of organize all those facts and brainstorm everything that the book taught us. So today I made a web and we'll talk about it together. I put in the middle of the web social insects because that's what we're learning about today. So let's see what we learned today about social insects. I put that bees and ants are social insects because that's what we learned. Those are the two types of social insects. They live in groups. Bees live in a hive and ants live in a nest called a colony. Each group has a queen, so that was the same about them, and she has the babies or lays the eggs. And then each group goes through four stages to become the adult. The queen lays the egg, it turns into larva, which is the worm type creature, and then it makes a pupa and then turns into the adult. Each group has a drone, and the drones are the males who help the queen make the babies, and then they die. And we also learned that some of the drones, up here I put, for ants, can be princesses, and they grow wings. Each group also has workers, and the workers have lots of jobs. They help take care of the babies, they collect the food, they tell the other insects where to find the food, and if they're a worker bee, they can also make honey, and they do a dance to communicate. And then the ants, we said, some grow wings if they're fed more, because those are the drones, and then they can turn into a princess if they're a girl, and then they lay the eggs and become the queen, and if they're a boy, they help the princess lay the eggs and then they die, and that's the job of the drone. So lots of cool facts today. And one of the main things that we learned was the life cycle. So today what I'm going to ask you to do and encourage you to do is to think about the life cycle of the ant and the bee. They were the same. They both went through four stages. So today what we're gonna do is we're going to take, I'm gonna walk you through and we're gonna do this, the ant life cycle together. And then I'm gonna encourage you to do the bee life cycle by yourself at home. So let's think about the ant life cycle. How does it start? It starts as what? What's up at the top? Yeah, the egg. The queen lays the eggs. And then the egg, out of the egg comes that worm. And what did we call it? Yeah, it's called the larva, similar to a caterpillar, right? And then the larva turns into the pupa, which is similar to the chrysalis or the cocoon in the caterpillar or butterfly life cycle. And then out of the pupa turns the adult ant. So there is the life cycle of an ant. Egg, larva, pupa, ant. So now what I want you to do is you will find attached to this lesson the bee life cycle. So if you can't, if you can't print this out, that's okay. You could draw it, okay? So it starts as the egg, and then you could draw some arrows, draw the other parts of the life cycle, and then over here are the words to help you spell, and you can write them underneath. So I encourage you to do that today. I encourage you to take a picture of it when you're done and send it to your teacher and show her how much you've learned about bees and ants today and how they are social insects and what their life cycle looks like. And we'll keep learning about social insects all week. Talk to you later, boys and girls.